الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبع سنته يوم الدين. First of all, I'm not his sheikh. He's my sheikh. Just to clear that up. Now, today, inshallah, I'm going to be talking about communication. Right, it's what we're doing right now. I'm communicating to you, so we all communicate. But I want to give the chance now to get some interaction from the audience. So I think we have a mic here somewhere. Do we have a mic in Moran? Okay. So I want to ask first of all, one of you guys here in the crowd, what you think communication is. I'll take this guy who's like trying to stop laughing in there, or is he either he's laughing or yawning in the stripy shirt. There's only one stripy shirt, but no problem. Give it to anybody. No worries. They told me we'd have a microphone ready, so I'd build, build up to this moment. Okay, forget the microphone. Can anyone tell me, if I said to you the word communication, who can put their hand up and define what they think communication means? We've got some young men here, so you guys should have a, an idea. Anyone? The way of conveying your thoughts and ideas. Anyone from the sister side? Would like to say anything? I've been told to engage the sisters, so that's what I'm doing. No problem. So anyway, communication is generally defined as the transfer of information. It's something we all do. We communicate on a daily basis. And most of our communication is done face-to-face -face and verbally. So as it's something we all do on a daily basis, it is something that we should know how to, how to communicate in life and as Muslims. Now. Effective communication is where you communicate your ideas in, so the person can understand your intention what, behind what you're trying to get across. And business, in the world of business, they like to say that you need four skills for effective communication. One is engaged listening. Two is non-verbal communication. Three, managing stress in the moment and asserting yourself in a respectful way. Now, we all know that there's these life they like to call them life gurus, life coaches. They, t they do a lot of motivational speaks on how to, speeches on how to live your life and how to succeed in life. And what we don't realize, and a lot of Muslims actually go to these, they hear that this famous guy, he's known to help your life and he can motivate you and teach you the secrets of living a happy life. What a lot of us don't realize that the majority of these people are actually, without them even knowing it, following the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. For example, they now say if you want to communicate your message across correctly, emphasize the point at least three times. And we know that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he used to emphasize things at least three times. So this is something that they're using. So today my point here is to highlight that to be effective in communication in life, we can follow examples given to us by the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And before I do that, it's enough that Allah tells us that we have in the Prophet Muhammad the very best of examples. But there are many non-Muslims who actually spoke about the Prophet Muhammad's leadership skills and his communication skills and how he was an all-round great human being. And I want to quote one of them. Some of you may or some of you may not have heard of a book that's called The, the Hundred Most Influential People of All Time, written by a non-Muslim called Michael Hart. And he chose the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, as the number one most influential human being that's ever lived. And I just want to read what he said here. He said, my choice of Muhammad to lead the list of the world's most influential people may surprise some readers and may be questioned by others. But he was the only man in history who was supremely successful on both the religious and secular levels. Now, I don't like to use the word secular. We would say everyday life. He said he came from humble origins and the Prophet Muhammad found in one of the world's greatest religions and became an immensely effective leader. And this is about leadership today. Today, 13 centuries after his death, his influence is still powerful and per per persuasive. So we can see here that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was not only Allah tells us in the Quran, like I said, which should be enough, but sometimes we kind of lose track. We get dragged in by like the brother emphasized, what we see in the media, and we seem to look to other people for these examples because sometimes we're so far away in many aspects from, many of us haven't read, for example, a detailed 
seerah, detailed story, biography of the Prophet Muhammad. So we tend to look for other people for our inspiration when those people in reality, whether they know it or not, they are using methods that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu himself taught. And before I go into some points from the Sunnah or from the life of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him on communication, I want to emphasize on the importance of good character. I know last time it wasn't, we don't have a microphone, but I want someone to tell me if they were to like judge the status of good character in Islam, what would you give it? Someone put their hand up and tell me if they think it's kind of important, important or very, very important. Someone give me their opinion, which they think it is, having good character in Islam. Can anyone give me their opinion? They think it's recommended, it's good, or it's highly, highly recommended. Someone give me... Highly, highly recommended. So much so that we have statements of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and we know that he came with Islam, he came with Tawheed. But he has a very famous hadith where he says, Inna makarim akhlaq, That I was not sent except to perfect the best of manners. So this is one of the major reasons he came, was to call people to the worship of Allah and then to give them good manners. So good manners is not something, you know, where you can take it or leave it. If you see a man who's supposed to be practicing Islam or a person, he's supposed to be practicing Islam properly, I don't care how big his beard is and how short his kandora may be, but he has very bad manners, then in reality, he is not following Islam correctly. And I want to emphasize on this character because... If you don't have a good character, you cannot be an effective communicator, you cannot be an effective leader. We see that the Prophet ﷺ, when he spoke about the best of people, he said that the best of people are the best of those who have the best manners. And one time the Sahaba, they asked the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, who will be the closest to you in Jannah? And the Prophet ﷺ said, the closest to me in Jannah will be those who have the best manners. And something even more than that. If I was to ask you, what is the heaviest deed on the Day of Judgment? Or what is one of the most heaviest? People will start saying, which of course is, the, is correct, but they would definitely say prayer, zakah, uh, psalm, hajj. But one of the heaviest deeds on the scales of Yawm Al-Qiyamah is good character. So this is how important having good character is. And we could go on, there's so many, and there's so many uh, hadith that talk about good character, it talks about those people who have good character, that when they argue, they give up an argument to be the better person, that they'll be given a house, for example, in the middle of paradise. So the status of, um, we could, like I said, we could go on. The status, of, uh, the status of the character in Islam is very, very important. Now, I want to talk some points on an effective way of communicating according to the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Now, as I mentioned, we have so many statements that talk about the Prophet ﷺ where he was, his character was so good. We hear stories where, for example, we hear, uh, I forget the name, subhanAllah, the, the Khadim Rasul ﷺ. Anas, he said that I was with the Prophet ﷺ. He worked for him, and nowadays many of us may have housemaids, or we may we may be managers, or not quite yet. But we may have housemaids, or we may have a tendency to speak to people who we deem to be lower than us in a bad way. And Abdullah Shetty, brother Abdullah, he had a post on Facebook yesterday, which is very pertinent to this, it's very relevant to this discussion. He said, if you have someone, you know somebody who was nice to you but he's not nice to the waiter that serves him. The reality, he's not a nice person. So if we find ourselves speaking down to the person who serves our tea when we order tea or whatever it may be, then this is a, re this is a problem with our character. Um, Anas, he worked for the Prophet Sallallahu for so many years and he grew up with him as from a boy. And he said, all these years that I worked with the Prophet, peace be upon him, he, didn't, he never even said to me, oof. He never complained. He was never rude to him. So we see that the, the way that the Prophet ﷺ was with people and the way his character was, was a very good character. And he taught us. He said, whenever you come across a person, he told them, smile to the people. And he told us that smiling to them is actually an act of charity. And we see that Abdullah ibn Harith said that I never saw a person 
who would smile so much as the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So we can see here we're being taught to be welcoming, to be friendly, to be kind, to have good manners. And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam also he emphasized on the importance of saying salam, giving greetings. We know that the more you, the longer your greeting is, the more reward you get. You say salam alaikum, you get ten. You extend it, you get ten. You extend it more, you get ten. So the emphasis here, and think about it. This is an everyday life now. Even if you go into the corporate world, just like uh, Brother Faris, you come from a corporate background. I used to work in Dubai world, for example. So you work in a corporate background. It's very important, as they say, first impressions last. And this is the same as a Muslim. Imagine now you're coming to a non-Muslim and you're a practicing Muslim. Imagine you respond to that non-Muslim in a bad way. What would he think about Muslims and Islam? And that's something as well. We have this attitude as well, many Muslims, that we treat non-Muslims badly. And again, if we see from the life of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he treated non-Muslims in a good way. He was respectful to them. He was always smiling, whether they were non-Muslims or Muslims. He always had the best of characters, the best of communication. We know that we're supposed to shake hands. Every time we shake hands, this is a way that we lose our sin. It's not just the formality that we go through, just shaking the hands to get it over and done with. When we shake hands, sins are removed from us. We find that the Prophet ﷺ, he never was harsh. He never raised his voice. He never spoke to people in a negative and bad way. And again, that goes back. How many of us do that now? How many of us we speak to, we judge. I mean, you guys are at school, right? There must be people in the school who get picked on, who get bullied. Maybe sometimes you guys join in with these people. You may speak bad, badly to them. You may make fun of them. But this is completely against Islam. If anything, you should be sticking up for those kind of people. And you should be making a stance. And there's something that Kind of it's off the topic, but it's not off the topic. And this is something that you guys, just like Brother Faris mentioned, uh, the problems of games or what have you, social media. We all know, right? Nowadays, and I've seen this, I have teenage children, so I see what goes on. Many of us are using these uh, social media. It's become a trend. I've noticed that a lot of the youngsters, they kind of find it cool from what I've seen from the chats, they do a lot of swearing in these chats, a lot of really, really, na uh, to be honest, really nasty language. And this has become a norm. And I think uh, back in the UK in our days, you said certain things, they would look at you as, you know, something wrong with you, you know. But nowadays, the language that's used, especially here in the Emirates, amongst the, if, if for lack of better words, the non-native English speakers who speak English amongst each other, they send a lot of really, really foul language, really, really bad language that you, I couldn't even imagine to say here. And it's become normal. And you find yourself, you know, if I don't say these kind of words or do these kind of jokes, I'm not going to be cool like the rest of the guys. That's the reality, right? But a lot of this is really bad. And I want you to think about something. Every time you send a message in these WhatsApp groups, you have angels, right? We know that the angels are on the right and the left, writing down our good deeds and our bad deeds. Can you imagine... Just writing these words, you, some people write on WhatsApp, that the angel, can you imagine the angels writing down these foul swear words, and then you have to stand in front of Allah on the day of judgment, and you're going to recall all this kind of foul language, all these kind of videos and pictures that people sent you, and you had a quick look, and you sent to the next guy, and you all had a quick laugh, and then you go home and delete before your parents see it, for example. That's the way it goes, right, in reality. All these things are going to be recorded. So we have to, this is very important because it goes against the Muslim's character and it's just generally what we should avoid.